peace, peace, love and light to you all, family. Welcome to another YouTube video with me, your host, Matrix. Yeah, we're back at it again. Today, we're going to be talking about dreams. So, um, I'm hoping that you are well. I'm hoping that you are good. And... Yeah, let's, I think, I think we can get, we can get directly into it. I think the sun is this side, so I don't want the... I don't want there to be the shadow in my eye. I think this should work. Uh, so yeah, today I quickly want to talk to you about dreams and how to understand the language of dreams, uh, to know how to interpret your dreams. Okay, so now the first thing that you need to know about dreams is that they are symbolic. They are symbolic. Now, dreams don't end when you wake up in the morning. When you wake up in the morning, you are waking up to another dream state. So this that you think is just the actual reality is nothing but a dream state also where now you're experiencing the third dimensional aspect of yourself. Remember, you have many aspects of yourself. You have your physical body, an ethereal body, an astral body, a casual body. You know, you have a body for different dimensions. And then this is the most gross part. It's the most dense part so when you wake up in the morning that's your 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 conscious mind is shifting wavelengths or rather your your brain is shifting wavelengths and according to where you are on a wavelength is where you're going to be functioning so here you'll be functioning on an alpha on an alpha wavelength which is where you are focused you are up you know you are doing your everyday activities and then when you go to sleep and your brain now stops producing serotonin which is a, a, a neurotransmitter which allows you to function during the, during the day. At night, your brain now produces melatonin, which calms you down now and now puts you in those theater states where you're going to be experiencing dreams. And now when you're experiencing dreams, you're going into, you're going into the super realms. You're going into the super dimensions. So you are going to what is known as the Toro or Amapupo, uh, the Netas. That's where... When you see, uh, when they speak about the Netarus in ancient Khmer in ancient Africa, the Netarus are depictions of states of mind, just as the zodiacal signs are depictions of states of mind. So when you sleep, what you do is you go into your inner world, and in those inner worlds, you tap into the different dimensions of yourself, where different ancestors dwell in different dimensions, depending on where you or how far developed you are in consciousness so the faster you are vibrating as a human being the higher and higher you can reach and the deeper and deeper you can reach within yourself now what you need to understand about dreams is that they are symbolic in nature and that is because the language of the subconscious mind the language of the spiritual planes when it comes into the physical it's not what we use here so so the spirit world doesn't necessarily use like numbers one two three four five six seven eight nine or A, B, C, D, E, F, G. It uses symbolic language, which is pictures, pictograms. It uses pictures as a form of language. So that's why sometimes you would see images and you would have to decode what certain images mean. I'll give you an example. Let's say you dream of, of being in water, right? Now, you would have to understand what water represents on a deeper level. A water could water represents because of its depths because of how deep it is it represents the deep subconscious also represents the emotions so if you're swimming around in your dreams and 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 the water is murky and it's not clear it could be just saying that hey you need clarity in your life you are emotionally murky you are not in a clear state of being you could uh, and these are just examples because you're going to have to look at the whole dream holistically. You could dream of yourself, let's just say, losing a cell phone or, or losing a cell phone that could now speak about communication. Oh, uh, I just saw a sandstorm starting there. Now, if, if this was a dream and then a sand, like like a, a tornado just picked up, which is it, which it is a dream, you'd have to decode in terms of what that means. You see, so now let's say you dream of losing a cell phone. That could be a thing of oh damn you losing connection with you losing connections with your inner worlds you know you need to connect better you need to you need to find a way to to connect with your inner worlds you see so there's many things that you could dream of if you dream of 
of yourself running uh, you, there's something that you are running from from within yourself you could dream of buying new sh new shoes dream of a car or dream of buying your cell phone that could be a thing of like hey bro there's new adventures about to pick up shoes they represent going somewhere a car it's adventure something is about to happen it doesn't also have to be something that's physical it could be now you're about to take on a new internal journey you see so you're gonna have to learn how to decode the dream entirely and dreams are also represented by different animals different animals also represent different dreams so you'll see a lion or you'll see a cat or you'll see an elephant and you'll have to know what these things represent because some of your ancestors represent themselves in different animal totems you see some some of your ancestors will come to you in the form of a leopard or a giraffe or a spider or a crocodile or a snake and you're gonna have to decode that oh damn that that represents this because what happens in the spirit or in the subconscious when it comes here the energies are different so something that looks hideous or something that's beautiful in the higher realms when it presents to you that energy or the, the thing that is trying to present itself as you the, there is nothing in the in the physical realm that could represent it so it finds the closest thing to that so that's how dreams work sometimes your guides want to tell you a specific thing but the the, the, the human language does not have it in words so they'll use a symbol of something that would represent that a light or they'll use a certain animal or they'll use an individual with the name of something so let's say you're looking for an answer right and then you knew someone in high school called Garabo or you know someone in your life the dream could not the dream you might think that the dream is about that person but what the dream is actually telling you is that hey Joe here's the answer here's the answer because the word Garabo means answer right so what you need to do is look at the names of the people in your dream look at the animals in the dream look at the environment that you're in and also feel the emotions of the dream what were you feeling when a, when a, when a particular thing was happening what was going on so these represent dreams di toro at the Netarus or the Netas, the, the gods, the so-called gods of ancient Egypt, those that you see with animal heads, that's why they used animal heads. It's symbolic language. So they would put Horus with the with a head of a bird. It's depicting what? That a bird is something that flies high. It it, it has um a bird's eye view. It can see it can see the whole land. So that's why that was used to represent the third eye and enlightenment because birds fly high. So that's a, that, that's, that's a language of saying, hey, be free like a bird. Or you see a woman represented with wings. Whenever you see, you, you, you see in ancient Egypt, it's, it's the women that have the wings because the women are the ones who incubate. They're the one who, who, who bring you in. They, they protect you, you know just as in the wild it's the female it's the lioness that protects it's it's the it's it's the the matriarch it's the female elephant that leads the group so you'd have to learn the different languages or you would rather have to allow, learn a symbolic language of what these of what these dreams mean it's the same thing as movies movies when you watch movies movies are written in the same way that dreams are written because it's you 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 could shorten a movie to two hours just as in a dream you could experience many things and that dream could 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 feel so short it's because everything is happening so fast it's pictures and when you wake up your your task is to now decode what these pictures mean the names of the people the environment that you were in what you were doing you were swimming in the ocean with dolphins or you were riding a bird you were flying you were scared you were in a dark room you know these represent many different things so now you have to learn and another way that now you you could help yourself in further understanding what what dreams are about is if you raise your spiritual vibration by doing certain breathing techniques, by doing certain yoga um, practices, meditations, practicing different postures, because then when you raise your energy, the, the faster your third eye vibrates. And the more your third eye vibrates, it decalcifies 
that covering that that's covering that spiritual eye and the more you can see into the dream spaces so now when people come and try things you see it before they happen because i mean we do live in a fallen state as humans so there will be people who there are people who are practicing such things as witchcraft and and and, and many hideous things doing animal sacrifices for malevolent purposes you know like they have bad intentions and now what happens is that now when your third eye is lit it's like an antenna it picks up on them so you can see into the spiritual world you you literally become a 007 of the spiritual plane you're a spy and once you see something in the spiritual plane you immediately cancel it out because you've seen it in the causal world remember the spirit is the cause the world that is the physical is the effects so when you peek into the spirit you are you are, you are peeking into where things are forming you are seeing the blueprints of what people are trying to do you see the intentions behind sometimes it's not even the people it's the spirits you see the spirits possessing certain people so somebody might be trying to do something and you see it prior in the spiritual realm you see now this is this is the importance it's very important when you're on the spiritual journey to open your third eye because trust me man the more spiritual light that you have the more beings that you have that want to suck on that they want to suck on that light and suck and suck and suck and suck on it you know because it's that powerful it's that powerful it's like moths to a flame so so you have to really become a flame so that when they come they burn you know that's that's that that's just what it is that's just what it is so you're gonna have to now fortify yourself and 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 bring yourself to a state where you are awake both in this physical dream and also in the dreams when you go to sleep at night so that now you are able to interact with the other beings on the other side because the journey has always been it's, it's always been two states we've always been walking in between two realms the physical and the spiritual it's just that now in different cycles the one becomes covered and our ability to access it becomes harder but now we are in such an age where the spiritual plane is opening up to us